Francisco should be the National League MVP. Um, what Otani's done is out of this world and obviously never been done before. But there's something to be said for what Francisco Lindor does on the defensive end. I saw it firsthand last night. It doesn't do it justice watching him on TV. How smooth he is and how he makes incredibly difficult plays look easy. So if I had a vote, Francisco Lindor would be my National League MVP. You, you did spend some time with Vientos. What, what was your first you know, takes of Mark Vientos when you met him in the spring? But what excited me specifically about Vientos was he stayed behind. Now, granted, it's seven o'clock in the morning. You know, for baseball players, that's incredibly early. So it's spring training, early work. He stayed behind and asked if he could ask me a few extra questions. And that's always stuck with me. And I've always rooted for him for that very reason that, you know, he, I'm sure he was tired. I'm sure, you know, there was part of him that didn't even really want to be there, you know, talking to me about, you know, the nonsense that I'm spewing. And, you know, for him to stay back and like just want to talk a little more baseball and got me excited about him. Jay Horowitz for this special edition of Amazing Conversations with my longtime friend. And really now he kind of works for me. He's on the alumni director and I guess you're an alumni. So I guess you work for me now. True. So do you, right. do you want me to start yeah. calling you Mr. J or what's, you know, what are you getting at here? Just MR is good. Okay. So, got it. So let me ask you a question. In your long and illustrious career, you're out in LA now. Um, I, 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 let me say it's a nice way. You weren't exactly a good luck charm to the Mets last night at Dodger Stadium. Wow, and, we're gonna we're gonna go there that early, huh? <laughs> no, I just want okay, to point it. All right, uh, uh, I, I will take that and I accept that. Um, I you got to get a win today. Well, it depends. Like if we win today, yes, I'll tell you I was there. Yes, and if we somehow don't win today, which I don't think is gonna happen, we're definitely right. Winning today, then I'll tell you that I wasn't there. How about that? Yeah, perfect. David, in your illustrious all-star career, how many games have you watched from the stands? Man, not many. Um, you know, as I think it's well documented towards the end of my career, I watched plenty of baseball from the dugout. <laughs> well, and, I told him I had to dug out from the stands. And wasn't participating much the last couple of years. Yeah. I, um, yeah. So I've seen a lot of baseball uh, in my life. I've played a lot of baseball in my life. I wish I could have played a little bit more. Right. But to see it now, you know, they say the same thing about taking your kids to Disneyland or Disney World that I think it's fairly miserable, but my kids love it. And to see it through their eyes gets you excited as a parent. I feel very similar. And I also feel like I gets the juices flowing when I walk back into Dodger Stadium. Uh, what or a great place. Or yeah, it was built in 1962. But two years before Shea State and still right, right, yeah. Well, I mean, the weather is, you know, a lot more friendly to the stadium out here. But when I walk into those cathedral ballparks, it brings back the memories, especially Dodger Stadium, because of what we did there in 06, 2015. Um, it gets those juices flowing. But to see how excited my kids get, my like my kid, uh, my, my kids yesterday tapped me on the shoulder as, um, you know, Nimmo and Alonzo and Lindor are on the on deck circle getting ready to go hit. And they're like, Daddy, you used to do that? And I'm like, yeah. And they were amazed. And it was so cool for them to ask that and experience that, that it's, uh, you know, I'll forever be grateful to the organization for allowing me to share these types of experiences with my kids. David, how, what's the agency of your kids again? I forget. Eight, six, four. So you go there yesterday. The game, unfortunately, wasn't even better better today. Um, did, did you get a chance to meet you know, say hello to any of the guys, or it was hard to do yesterday when you were there? No, I know how playoff baseball is. You look on the field, and there's a million people. Um, you know, I remember, you know, uh, uh, you know, Jay Hortz grabbing me and trying to take me a million different places for yes. interviews here, interviews yes. there. You know, so I didn't want to mess with those guys. Um, you know, but my favorite player is Dave Racanello, so I got a chance to see him. Yeah. And uh, you know, he 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 threw he always throws the kids a ball, so they get. Did a, he, you got a rack autograph. I got a rack autograph. So if anybody, uh, I'll accept top dollar on eBay. So if anybody's looking for a Dave Racanello autograph, I have it. You know, you brought up a a good point. I mean, in '06, we we clinched a division with the Dodgers. Uh, I think we beat them three straight. No, or I forget. It was a three straight. In what in what year day? Oh six. Oh six. Yeah, that that was a that was a good one. Um, yeah. We we swept them. We, we swept it, and and then we won in um in in, in fifteen. In game we five. Won the five game series. 
you know, uh, talk about our friend, uh, Mr. Murphy. What, what, what kind of a player front? Six home runs, straight straight games, seven altogether. I mean, phenomenal. I can't believe that's nine years ago that he had that run. Best uh, performance over that type of stretch, regular season, postseason, that I've ever seen. Unexpected, so, really. No, part of. no disrespect to Murph, but a little unexpected. Jeez, I mean, you're just throwing daggers. No, I'm, come on, I mean, seriously. I mean, Jay, I be think, nice. I thought, like, the older you get, the nicer you're supposed to get. I feel like what? you're getting meaner. No, um, but, but, I mean, seriously, I mean, six home runs in six straight games. Well, I mean, I think that's unexpected for anybody. That's unexpected for Babe Ruth. But, yeah, um, you know, yeah, I mean, under those circumstances, what he did during that postseason was the most special run. Uh, that I certainly have ever been a part of, but certainly individual performance, the most dominating individual. And it wasn't – he was hitting them off Kershaw and Granky and – Yeah, and, and, and cup pitchers too. I mean, yes. good, pitch, good uh -huh. pitchers. Arietta. I mean, I mean, he was hitting them off everybody. I think Fernando Rodney was included in that. I mean, he was hitting them off everybody. You know what I remember most about that game? I, we, I think we fell behind, and, and Murph hit a double single – and went to third when nobody was covering. They said, "Oh my God, what's going on?" Ah! Yeah, I, think, made it. I think that was at Dodger Stadium. And if you yes, look, yes. If you look back, and I just saw this video a couple of days ago, and I don't think I ever knew it. And Tim Tuffle's a, a great friend and obviously a great coach of mine. But he's kicking the dirt off a of third base as Murphy's coming in. He has no idea what's going on. And the look, <laughs> the look on Tuffle's face when he looks up and sees Murphy like running wildly towards him is amazing like I, I wish that we could get i would love to do a freeze frame of tuffle's face when he looks up and sees murphy running towards him unexpectedly that was great and we won and murphy had a home run in the six and we, we you know i think um jake didn't have his best the grom didn't have his best stuff he battled through and and noah came on and familia closed it down so that was uh, you know well this year you know hopefully uh we're you know, we 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 can we, we were down one, but what you what did you make with your time in the spring? You you did spend some time with Vientos. Is this unexpected for you, David? I mean, how he's come on. What what was your first you know takes of Mark Vientos when you met him in the spring? Well, I loved, and I, I met him a few springs ago when he was a minor leaguer. Um, and what I loved most about Mark was his eagerness to discuss the game and eagerness to ask questions. Um, I remember going over to the minor league side and I had a group of infielders. Uh, I think it was Beatty and Vientos and Mauricio and, you know, maybe a few others. And, you know, we were just, just talking baseball. Like they wanted me to like go, not necessarily work with them on the infield, but kind of, I, I'm more into the mental approach and like dealing with the pressures of New York and time management and stuff like that. These guys can play. They, they have the fundamentals down. But what excited me specifically about Vientos was he stayed behind. Now, granted, it's seven o'clock in the morning, you know, for baseball players, that's incredibly early. So it's spring training, early work. He stayed behind and asked if he could ask me a few extra questions. And that's always stuck with me. And I've always rooted for him for that very reason that, you know, he, I'm sure he was tired. I'm sure, you know, there was part of him that didn't even really want to be there, you know, talking to me about, you know, the nonsense that I'm spewing and, you know, for him to stay back and like, just want to talk a little more baseball got me excited about him. You know, and, and I know in this spring, I think it was this spring, you did a podcast with Lindor. Did, have you ever seen a player turn the season around what he's done? I mean, the first month of the season wasn't great, but, I know Otani's probably going to win the MVP, but he's probably got 10 or 11 big hits for us, the playoffs included. I mean, it's remarkable what he's done this year and played play defense too. Ben and Eddie Shorts are probably around. Yeah, I mean, this is this may be a hot take. I'm not sure if it's a hot take or not, but uh, I think Francisco should be the National League MVP. Um, what Otani's done is out of this world and obviously never been done before, but there's something to be said for what, Francisco Lindor does on the defensive end. I saw it firsthand last night. It doesn't do it justice watching him on TV, how smooth he is and how he makes incredibly difficult plays look easy. So if I had a vote, Francisco Lindor would be my National League MVP. I mean, he really gets overlooked. I mean, considering the start he has, right? I mean, 
I mean, his his stuff has really gotten overlooked a little bit, right? He had a bad month or two, but there's nobody in the league has played better than him. Not just that. I mean, I think that it should take into account the 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 clutch performances, the clutch hitting, those big hits that he's had. I mean, you can count them on. I mean, you need to take your shoes off to be able to count the big hits that he's had for this team, especially late in the year. Yeah, especially the one in, in, in the Braves. I mean, you know, I mean, Alonso was in Milwaukee, but I mean, if Lindor doesn't hit the home run against the Braves, there's no postseason really. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, you're forgetting, I think the biggest one is the Philadelphia series where, you know, it just seems like this team, you know, can can look dead for seven or eight innings. And then all of a sudden they get a little spark and they get a little opening or, um, you know, and then they find a way, you know, to win baseball games late, which I think is an incredible, incredibly important quality, especially come playoff time. And you know what, Dave, this is an easy group of guys to work with, root for. Iglesias, uh, you know, Lindor, the pitchers, not a lot of no name, not big name pitchers, guys have done their job and, you know, and, and, you know, just a, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, Taylor and you know, a lot of, it's a lot of great storylines, human interest storylines to root for, you know, don't you think? I agree. And I mean, I think that, um, you know, when you look at this team as a whole and the fun that they're having, um, you know, it, it, it reminds me a lot of, you know, watching a Jose Reyes play where he's always got a smile on his face. It reminds me a lot of, you know, those teams that we had where you had, you know, not necessarily characters, but guys that kept it loose in the clubhouse. And that translated into feeling a little more comfortable on the field. And I think this team has a lot of similarities for some of those good teams that I got a chance to play on with everybody kind of gelling and meshing and kind of pulling that rope in the same direction. Speaking of gelling and meshing, I want to take you back to uh, late July 2015, uh, the Wilma Flores saga. There was a scene in there, five days in Flushing, according to S&Y. You know, he almost gets traded. And he thinks he gets traded. And the scene in you in the dugout with your arm around Wilmer trying to console him. What, what did you say to him that day, uh, David? Well, Wilmer, um, it's well documented that he's probably one of the best teammates that if you ask anybody that's been his teammate, no matter what team, no matter what time frame, I think Wilmer's name will come up there towards the top. I mean, he's just genuinely great to be around. And he's one of those guys that you you root for, you know, secretly, even when he's on another team, because he's that good of a guy. Um, and I think people don't understand, especially in the international free agent business, you know, a lot of these guys get signed when they're they're kids, you know, 16 years old. So you're a Met at 16 years old. You come up through the system. They develop you. In a lot of cases, they help you speak English. They help you um, do day-to-day things in this country that, you know, a lot of us kind of take for granted. They teach you, you know, kind of how to be an adult, how to handle yourself. And then all of a sudden you make your debut with the Mets. That's all you know is is Mets. Your best friends are Mets. Um, And then, you know, kind of in a small time frame, that has the chance to be ripped away from you. And it gets emotional. Like I'd feel the same way if if somebody came up to me and were like, hey, there's a good chance you're going to be traded. I don't know how I would react because I'd be emotional too. Um, You know, so the, the only thing I told Wilmer is that wherever he goes, He's going to be successful wherever he goes. They're going to want you. You always, as a player, want to be wanted, um, you know, and, and and more than anything, trying to be like a big brother to him because he was such a great teammate. You never want to see, especially publicly, um, a friend kind of go through those emotions and the camera always being on you. And, and, and it's a tough deal. And thankfully for us, uh, it fell through, and uh, I think he hit a walk-off homer the next day. or maybe- The Friday night, yeah. 12th inning against Washington. Mm-hmm. I remember Ron Darling, uh, and he, I think he had gotten a, si- a single his first time up, mm-hmm. and Darling said, well, the only way to cap Wilma Flores weekend is to hit a home run, and <laughs> two seconds later, he hits the home run, and yep. he's running around the uh, bases, you know, points to his Mets. chest, says yep. Mets on. Pretty, I even cried that night. Yeah, pretty pretty special. I mean, it was like, you, like I said, you root for everybody on your team, you know, but there's obviously certain guys that you develop these relationships with over time that 
when they have success, it feels like you're having success. And Wilmer's one of those guys. Yeah, but talk about what Cespedes meant to the team. Get him over to train. He had about 12, 13, 14 home runs the last part of the year. And every like almost like Lindor, every time we needed a home run or a big hit, you would get the big hit. I mean, it was a pretty remarkable run. Yeah, I mean, I think that the expectation that year was that we were going to make a significant deadline move. And from what I understand, um, you know, Sandy was very diligent and working his tail off to get a deal done. And I, you know, maybe a deal here fell through, maybe a dear deal there fell through. Um, and right before the deadline, we get the news that we're getting Cess. And it obviously provides a shot in the arm and some energy into the clubhouse when the front office and ownership, you know, quote, goes for it and, you know, trades a couple pieces to get an impact player like that. But we didn't realize or understand the type of impact player that we were getting back, especially for that stretch. I mean, he took us from a level of, you know, fringe borderline playoff team to all of a sudden, you know, world series contender with how he came over and swung the bat and just the, a lot of times hitting is contagious. And when he got on that role, you know, we as a team got on that role and kind of followed that lead and, and, and caught that, that hitting bug that, that you has brought over. You know, 2015 was a tough year for you personally. You get diagnosed spinal stenosis early in the year. You battle through. I can remember, I think it was 15, spending time with you with St. Lucie, um, three, four hours to get you ready to take it bat in, 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 in a rehab game. You made it back to the end of the year. And, you know, how rewarding, you know, I'm sure after 15, it wasn't what you wanted, but how rewarding was it that year to, you know, to, to sweep the Cubs? Uh, and beat the Dodgers and, you know, come with a, a whisker of, you know, I mean, a couple of breaks, you get, get a world champion, hit a World Series home run. I mean, how rewarding was that for you personally after all you went through with all your the things that could have set you back, but you, you kept persevering? Yeah, I mean, I'll forever look at that as a team and an organization and a city accomplishment over – you know, me personally, but when I, when I narrow it down to kind of the range of emotions and the feelings that I felt that year, you know, obviously going from, you know, you have this serious back condition that, you know, ultimately um, the writing was on the wall that that was going to end my career to the jubilation of being able to be a small part of, of that run and that playoff experience and that world series experience, you know, that's something that, um, you know, I, I can't show you now, or I mean, I guess I could, but one of the, my prized possessions is that national league championship ring. And I look at it every day. Um, you know, when I come down here and you know, the, the, the emotion that goes through me when I look at that ring, it's, it's, it's the first thing I think about is I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, I got a chance to kind of be on that ride and experience that before my playing time was done. Um, because that's one of the things I yearn for the most was, playing in a world series. And, and I, to this day, I think that if we don't sweep the Cubs and we can go to, you know, take that series a little later into the week that we come into Kansas city a little more fresh and, and we have a much better chance of winning that series yeah. because that time off uh, for us, for me, at least, I think really killed us. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't easy. I know being firsthand what went through, wasn't easy, you know, what you did. I, I got to tell the audience, you're, you're, a, you're a coach, you coach your kids. And you, the other day you told me a great coaching technique about how you, you bought your, your one of your team's uh, 300 balloons, water balloons, yeah. and it hit off the water balloons. Tell me exactly how that works and was it successful? Well, if, uh, I will say that I think I'm in the lead for four-year-old <laughs> baseball coach of the year out here in California. Um you know, I'm kind of a guru when it comes to, you know, manipulating and getting these four year old kids to pay attention for an hour at practice. Um, but, you know, the, the, the key is that for me, at least, I always remember having fun at practice, having fun at the games. And, you know, you, you, you got to break up the monotony, you know. So for us, you know, I went and bought like 300 water balloons, filled them up, took them to practice. You know, the kids were dragging a little bit. So I said, OK, let's have some fun. So we hit the water balloons. If they hit the water balloon and made it explode. They got to throw a water balloon at me 
you know, at kind of point blank range. So we worked on hitting, we worked on throwing and, you know, that's why I'm in the lead for, for four year old coach. Of the I don't work with Terry. You throw the water balls at Terry. He would have liked that. Right. That would have been, that might've got us more prepared for the world series. Had we had a day where Terry filled up 300 water balloons, <laughs> and just water balloons instead of baseball. So let me go back to Dodger game. How many did people recognize you sitting in the stands? You didn't go with your uniform on, did you? <laughs> Not this time, but I might try that today. The last, time I, the last time I wore my uniform to something, we, we played pretty well. So maybe I'll wear my uniform today. No, so did anybody recognize it, David, yeah, or no? Mets fan, the Mets fans are the best. And I'm not just saying that. But, like, you know, and even my wife, you know, tells me all the time, it's like, you're not recognizable. You're, you're, you're you know, no one's going to recognize you. And, and, and Mets fans always come through. They're, they're very genuine when they come up and they're, they compliment you know, me, um, and it, undeservingly so, like I always give it right no, back. Exactly. I should be thanking you. I mean, it's, it really is, you know, special when you go into Dodger stadium and Mets fans come down to you and shake your hand and say, you know, talk a little baseball or talk about, you know, for me, you know, the good old days of 06 or, or 2015. So I, 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 that's never lost on me. And I appreciate that. So from yesterday, how many hot dogs did your crew eat? Hot dogs and ice creams? Uh, my kids, this is Parenting 101. So the game started at 5 o'clock West Coast right. time. We got there early. They started out with a hot dog. You would appreciate that. Yes. Um, they they soon switched over to a pretzel. Good. I think is all awesome. combo. Yep. Then it was time for something sweet, obviously. So we allowed them to get a icy, you know, like the 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 frozen, basically like sugar drink. So they had one of those, and apparently that didn't wet their whistle enough. So we went from frozen icy to ice cream. Oh boy! And then to top it all off, as a uh, you know an, an after dinner just um, treat, they went cotton candy after that. So oh my! God. I used time, to love cotton candy. I can never get it out of my teeth. They have school today, so by the uh -huh. time we got home at 9 p.m. They had hot dog, pretzel, ice cream, <laughs> ice cream, cotton candy. So you know, for all you parents out there, that's that's parenting 101. Well, I tell you, I wish, yeah, my it was great. But listen, yeah, always good to speak to you, David, and hope you go out there. We got to get another win, keep this going. It's been a great year. It's really been fun to watch this team. You know, it's it's you know 22 and 33 to where we are now. It's 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 fun thing to watch and. I know the ride won't stop. I know we're going to get some wins today and, you know, keep it going. And, you know, I hope to see you soon. Regards to Molly and the kids. As always, I appreciate your time. Jay, I've told you this once. I've told you a million times. You're the best. What? Uh, we, we certainly don't get a chance to see each other enough anymore. But every, every chance I get a ch to see you, yeah. uh, you're, you're the best. You're one of a kind, my friend. I appreciate you, Mr. Wright. Thank you, sir. See you, Jay Bird.